Hello, my dear student. Welcome to another edition of your mathematics lesson today. In continuation with our main topic, that is algebraic fractions. What we are going to discuss today is division of two algebraic fractions. So let's begin. After completing the very lesson today, my dear student, you'll be able to divide the two algebraic fractions. This is what I hope you will be able to do after completing the very lesson today. As usual in your favorite segment of the lesson, my dear student, today I'll give you another interesting number. This number is 11. 11 is so interesting, so unique, so special. I'll tell you what is interesting about this very number, 11, after completing my lesson today, so don't go away. My dear student, to begin the lesson, let us learn the rule. It is this rule that will guide us what we need to do from step number one up to the last step in order to do this division of two algebraic fractions successfully. So rule number one says uh, you now convert that division, that is you now convert your division into multiplication because we are now dividing by fraction. Remember, even in case of numeric fraction, if you are dividing by fraction, it's always good you now change that division to multiplication. And when you change the division to multiplication, remember what we now do, we now multiply by the reciprocal of that very second fraction, that is the fraction we are using to divide. So when that is done, step number two is now says factorize all the numerators and the denominators completely. This is exactly the process we do first while multiplying two algebraic fractions because now we have changed the division to multiplication problem. So step number three says divide the numerators and uh, denominators by the common factors. That is, after factoring, there may be some common factors between numerator and uh, the denominator. So if that is happened, you now divide by those common factors. Step number four says multiply the remaining factors in the numerator and uh, finally multiply the remaining factors at the denominator. So from step number two to step number five are exactly the four steps that we took uh, while multiplying the two algebraic fractions because uh, what this rule says for division, you now change your division to multiplication. And we learn how to multiply two algebraic fractions in our previous lessons. So the problem of division is now resolved or converted to problem of multiplication. So let's just take examples. We learned how to multiply already, but for the sake, let's just take an example. Example is says simplify this fraction that is a square plus 2a minus 24 all over a plus 1. And this fraction is to be divided by another fraction, and this second fraction is a square minus a minus 12 all over a plus 1 in bracket, and the bracket rest to the power of 2. Solution to this very problem, what we now do, we copy the given task, that is this division of these two fractions. So rule number one says we now convert this division into multiplication problem. And how we do that, we always say if we now change this division to multiplication, we now multiply by the reciprocal of this second fraction. The fraction that we are dividing with so reciprocal of this will now just a matter of swapping numerator to become denominator and denominator to become your numerator. Let me do that. So I'm going to have uh, my first fraction, that is the fraction I'm dividing. This division sign now changed to multiplication. Then what I'm going to write uh, multiplied by this a plus 1 raised to the power of 2 will now go as your numerator while a square minus a minus 12 will now becomes your denominator. So I'm going to have uh, a plus 1 in the bracket raised to the power of 2 over a square minus a minus 12. So this is what I'm going to do. So you can see this division problem now change or converted to multiplication problem. So we learn how to multiply two fractions. So next step it says factorize all those that are factorizable. I can see numerator of my first fraction as factorizable. And I can see denominator of my second fraction as factorizable. So let me just do that. So starting with uh, the numerator of my first fraction, this is a quadratic function. 
Factorization of this, if done correctly, you now have a plus 6 multiplied by a minus 4. And uh, this numerator of the second fraction is just to multiply that bracket, that is a plus 1 times a plus 1. While the denominator of the second fraction, which I said is factorizable, and it is a quadratic function. So factorization of this quadratic, if you done correctly, you now have a minus 4 multiplied by a plus 3. So this is the factorization of this. So next step number three is now says uh, you now check out whether there are common factors between your numerator and the denominator. I can see here a minus four. This is another a minus four. I have a plus one. This is another a plus one. These are the common factors. So I will now cancel them out. Uh, let's do that. So a minus four. Look at it. Canceling a minus four while a plus 1 cancel in this a plus 1. So what remains at the numerator level is this bracket a plus 6 times this a plus 1. While what remains at the denominator is this bracket a plus 3. So let me do the multiplication and write the final result. This will now have my numerator, this bracket times that bracket is what remains. So you have a plus 6 multiplied by a plus 1 all over a plus 3. So this is not the simplified form of this very, very problem. With this, I have come to the end of this very lesson. My dear students, I hope with the few examples given, you'll be able to divide it to algebraic fractions. And let me just move to the last segment, which is fun, and I explain what is interesting about that number 11. 11, it says, is the only prime rep digit. Rep digit means a repeated digit. So 11 is the only is the only prime number which is a rep digit. Before you get this this large prime number, this is another prime number, and you can see it is a rep digit. So 11 is the only number you can have as a prime before this very prime number, which means all other prime numbers before this you may not have. A rep digit, meaning they are not rep digits. This number is so large. Let me see even if I can read it out. This is 1 pentillion, 111 quadrillion, 111 trillion, 111 billion, 111 million, 111 thousand and 111. This number is so large and it is prime. But it is only rep digit prime after this very 11. So 11 is so interesting. Thank you for your attention. We see more of those interesting things in mathematics in our subsequent lessons.